we're here today talking about uh, changes that have occurred in the legal system that have been forced upon us by the pandemic, COVID-19. Uh, I've, I'm calling it the, uh, the paradigm shift brought about by COVID-19 in the legal system. Uh, as by way of background, uh, when COVID really shut the country down in March of 2020, uh, the courts pretty much ground to a halt. Uh, no one quite knew how to deal with it. Uh, we could not bring people into the courthouse because of the risk of infection. Uh, we couldn't get together in deposition rooms, uh, which of course are relatively small, sometimes overpopulated with people, uh, and go with the risk of, of transmission. Uh, the other issue is uh, we were all thinking that masks might be the best approach. Masks bring their own problems because they, uh, they prevent us from uh, both from hearing everything because sometimes uh, your speech is muffled and at other times uh, fully appreciating the facial expressions that can tell us so much about what we're talking about. So what emerged was a, uh, a culture of video teleconferencing, uh, primarily with the Zoom platform. Now, initially it had its issues because of security. Those were quickly adjusted. And uh, for the most part, uh, at least here in Florida, uh, the majority of, of courts rapidly added uh, broadband capability uh, and Wi-Fi facilities adequate enough to handle video conferencing, placing it into every judge's courtroom, uh, every judge's uh, judicial chambers. Uh, and of course, ironically, most people were not actually in the courthouse because the courthouse was closed to, uh, to the public. But uh, we all began to use the Zoom platform from our respective offices, if uh, we were in an office, office that was open, uh, which uh, was not all that common, uh, more frequently uh, utilizing it from, from home. So uh, what happened was we all got used to uh, taking depositions, uh, having court hearings, uh, even mediations uh, that were conducted entirely in a virtual uh, setting. Uh, through the Zoom platform. Now, some courts have utilized Microsoft Teams. Uh, some people prefer it, uh, but it seems like the uh, the most ubiquitous platform uh, is is Zoom uh, right now. So, for the course of uh, over a year, at least in Florida, uh, we were limited to uh, the presentations virtually uh, on the Zoom platform. Uh, because of the rapid rate of vaccination, uh, the courthouses have now started to open up and people are actually starting to have uh, real live depositions. Uh, mediations are still occurring virtually, but they're also starting to occur uh, live as well. Now, when I say that it's produced a paradigm shift, what does that mean? We discovered that it's incredibly convenient to not have to sit in traffic for a uh, half hour, hour, hour and a half, sometimes longer uh, to travel uh, to the courthouse and then same period of time back to our respective offices. Uh, when we would get to the courthouse for a morning routine hearing that they call uh, usually the uniform motion calendar, uh, everyone would sit around just waiting. Uh, and it would not be terribly productive, except to the extent that you could work on your, uh, your smartphone uh, sitting there in the hallway. Uh, now, uh, because these hearings can be conducted remotely on the Zoom platform, we can sit in our office and just uh, log in to the queue. And when the court's ready for our hearing, uh, we get called up and we can stop multitasking and we can pay attention to the particular hearing uh, that's been set for that day. But in the meantime, we're free to go ahead and utilize that time productively. Uh, 
translated into the uh, context of the mediation. Instead of everyone traveling to a location for a mediation uh, or being limited to a particular mediator because they live uh, in a particular area of the state, and Florida is a big state, uh, we can all do it now virtually so that uh, we're assigned our own little breakout rooms where we have privacy and confidentiality and we can do our presentations uh, together uh, in a gallery setting and then we're broken up into our individual rooms. Doing it this way, we have the advantage of having claims adjusters that are back in their home offices, wherever they may be, Indiana, Ohio, New York, California, uh, and they're participating as opposed to uh, having to spend hours and hours or days uh, flying in uh, without having the end of the day uh, forced deadline of them saying, I've got a plane to catch. I've got to leave this mediation. We can't conclude it. Uh, instead, everyone just stays until we're done. And so uh, that's been a shift in the way we do things. Now, will that continue on? At the present, uh, at least here in Miami, which is Miami-Dade County, the 11th Judicial Circuit uh, in and for uh, Florida, we're currently surveying uh, the legal community and the judges are discussing among themselves whether they want to continue uh, having their morning motion calendar done uh, on a Zoom platform uh, so that people don't have to travel to the courthouse uh, and spend that time there. Uh, we're still emerging from the, uh, the cocoon uh, that we had placed ourselves into in order to uh, avoid transmission of COVID. And so uh, there are issues of uh, jury selection that may come up with a, a hybrid solution where initial jury screening could occur uh, on the Zoom platform. And then later, uh, the jury is brought to the courthouse for uh, for the actual jury trial itself. Um, but the availability of having an efficient and very easy to use uh, video platform uh, has enabled us to provide legal services much more efficiently. Uh, it's a cost savings uh, to the client. It's a cost savings to the law firms. Uh, and it also produces a far greater uh, degree of efficiency uh, on the part of the uh, the judicial system itself and, and, and judges in particular, because you can move from place to place uh, simply by, uh, you know, so clicking, clicking on the icon uh, on your, uh, on your, your Zoom uh, gallery and you've got your lawyer there. Uh, it's, it, it's been a game changer. Now the question is, you know, will it, you know, will it stay? Uh, has this paradigm shift? Uh, become permanent. And I, the sense that I have is that it will make changes. Uh, the area that probably will be uh, most benefited will be the ability to have witnesses who are in remote locations uh, testify live as opposed to uh, having to try and uh, talk them into getting on an airplane, taking them away from their businesses or their, or their medical practices. Uh, to come in and testify as expert witnesses. Uh, if you can get a doctor to testify live from the office in his hospital out at UCLA or, uh, or Cornell Weill in New York, uh, and them not have to worry about getting on a plane, uh, it's going to make them probably uh, more willing to participate in the system, uh, as well as uh, enable the jury to see them live with the interaction of actual cross-examination as opposed to being limited to uh, a videotaped deposition if you could not bring them in live. Plus there's the added cost savings of you know, not having to fly in your expert, put your expert up overnight, deal with the issue of uh, when does your expert get on the stand? Uh, when does your expert have to leave because they have to catch a plane back home? So it, it will be a tremendous advantage in the actual presentation of trial, uh, trial testimony. If uh, the courts will continue to allow us to have witnesses testify uh, remotely, uh, but in real time. So these are the kinds of changes that uh, that we're I think we're going to continue to see, only because they do make sense. And one of the biggest complaints that we had, you know, before 
the pandemic hit was that the cost of litigation was just out of control. This is one method of controlling the cost of litigation and making these cases uh, more economically efficient to handle and economically feasible for uh, many lawyers to undertake and many clients to have uh, adequate representation. So I think that's going to be uh, one of the long-term effects that virtual environment that we were forced into by the pandemic uh, will have long-term on the legal profession. 